my name is Dr. Zara Zaidi, and I'm one of the second year pediatric GI fellows at the Johns Hopkins Children's Center. Our department presented a case presentation at this year's annual North American Society for Pediatric Gastroenterology, Hepatology, and Nutrition, or NASPAGAN conference, regarding an unusual case of a six-year-old male seen in our clinic for dysphagia or trouble swallowing. This symptom was associated with a persistent cough, intermittent vomiting, and epigastric abdominal pain. After an extensive workup, including baseline labs, inflammatory markers, celiac serology, thyroid function testing, stool studies, an upper GI series, and a brain MRI, he was found to have a prominent cricopharyngeal bar in the esophagus. This is an anatomical finding seen when there is a failure of the cricopharyngeus muscle to relax while swallowing, which leads to dysphagia. This is a rare cause of dysphagia in children with an incidence of 0.11 per 100,000 annually. In a normal state, the upper esophageal sphincter surrounds the upper part of the esophagus at the level of the cricoid cartilage, preventing swallowed and reflexed material from re-entering the pharynx and air from entering the GI tract. When the upper esophageal sphincter coordination is uncoordinated, it manifests as choking, gagging, regurgitation, or recurrent pneumonia. We proceeded with a combined GI and ENT procedure to further assess the area. The bronchoscopy showed mild outpouching before the upper esophageal sphincter, but was otherwise normal with no cricopharyngeal hypertrophy or prominent bar. The upper endoscopy showed no upper esophageal pathology, but an additional procedure was performed using an endoluminal functional lumen imaging probe or endoflip for further assessment. This showed retrograde contractions in the middle lower esophagus with diminished anterograde contractions in the middle esophagus indicating some dysmotility. Cricopharyngeal achalasia is an uncommon cause of dysphagia with limited therapeutic options in pediatrics, including esophageal dilation, botulinum toxin, or endoscopic cricopharyngeal myotomy for refractory cases. This case highlights a rare cause of dysphagia that is not often seen, but when discovered should be monitored closely and assessed for possible future indications for intervention. Thank you to Dr. Scheiman, Dr. Lowry, and Dr. Dilwali for your mentorship and your collaboration in the presentation of this interesting case.